Hi, this is PJ and today I want to show you what has happened the last few years since I last uploaded some flying videos. I've moved the simulator to a new room and I'm currently in the phase of uh, rebuilding everything. So it's more or less disassembled and yeah, as I said, it's a new room which is a lot bigger. The last one was maybe half a meter behind the shell. There was a wall and that pretty much sucked. So I got into a new room. Still have no visuals built here, but there is a new floor, which is a lot higher than the old one. And interesting enough, <laughs> I, I came up with my own solution um, of using those uh, aluminum tubings but I'm not really satisfied with the stability, so I will eventually put in some heavier wood to stabilize everything. But the idea was to make it really light and have enough room for cabling and uh, the yokes and so on. Um, below, the platform is mounted on wheels, so it can be moved around the room quite easily. And what else is new? Oh, a lot of things are new. This is the uh, cockpit for you, throttle. Not new, but this. This is brand new. Oh, well, I bought it uh, used, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a flight deck solution IBA main instrument panel that I am rewiring now. Still have my old autopilot that I made fit in and the EFIS. Screens are also the same. The CDU or the FMC, that's new, that's from Flight Tech Solutions. Also got it on the aftermarket. And everything here is more or less working. I'm still working on the clocks. There's already a screen fitted. That's uh, I think a five inch monitor. Yeah and the buttons are operating but I have to come up with a better design. I'm probably doing it with a laser cutter so it's gonna be neat. Down here is the spare out for the yokes. If it's not sufficient I will cut the lower part as well so I can go all the way down to the floor and that gives me more than 30 centimeters. But let's see coming up with a solution for those original yokes. Those OEM yokes is quite complicated. The engineering side, if you want to do it right. And I don't want to mess up uh, the original parts. But eventually I will probably need to screw something onto on the main instrument panel. I've wired most of the stuff. This is pretty amazing, pretty cool. You can adjust the brightness of each screen here. Everything wired. Backlighting as well. It's not separate for captain and first officer yet. I might eventually do that. I'm a, I'm a bit too lazy. So that's the floodlight. Still no cover plate down here and the lighting has to be attached firmly and here I just cramped it in works fine for me AFDS floodlight also working and switch all the displays low DU still missing that one's working although I have to resold it. Can you see that? Here. It's sometimes flickering. I already tried it once and it worked for a few days and it started flickering again. So yeah, that sucks. All the annunciators working. Switches as well. Auto brake. Still not the original switch that you would have to pull out to 
get to the max position, but for the moment that's fine. Let's not overdo it. Here. Recall, working, both sides. And those, oh, fuck. Those knobs. <laughs> I have to, I have to order some custom, custom knobs for that. So it's working like it's real counterpart, but whoever needs that, I never used it. Fuel flow, reset. That's working. This one is still a dummy. There's two as well. This is a genuine OEM gear lever. It's a real gear lever. Coming out of a early 737 or a 727. I have to look it up, I'm not too sure. And it was originally fitted um, with a solenoid that would prevent it uh, from being operated when the when the aircraft is uh, on the ground or also when it's too fast but I'm, I'll have to look it up I uh, screwed it off because I had no space um, on the back side of can you see it here uh, we'll have a look from behind on the back side of the main instrument panel um, I would have to cut everything and that would risk the stability. I might do it at a later point, but as of now I'm just fine with the looks and above all the feel. It's a very heavy mechanism And lock override is also working, but since there's no locking function right now Not really needed. For the first officer CDU, I'm probably gonna use the flying gravity uh, CDU, the older version that I still have, and I will refit it with one of these nice color screens, and that should do it for the moment. Also, we'll have to we'll have to get rid of its back cover so it will fit in with um, those rails, which are original. That's pretty cool. So you can. Screw on every rear panel that you have, and it will fit instantly. Zeus rails, Zeus rails. No idea how to pronounce it, but when you have them, they're pretty cool. But you need original equipment for that. So if you're operating with a mix between real and uh, replica panels, it can get annoying at times. But hey, yeah, by the way, that's a, or that was a rear panel from a funny story from a Lufthansa 737. And I got it off eBay. It came from Hong Kong, so it went from Germany to Hong Kong. Was then refitted with uh, one of the older Go Flight uh, do it yourself uh, kits. And it's now more or less. A go flight uh, GF 166, I guess. Yeah, pretty cool. Not all of the functions are working, so I have to rewire those switches as well. And I'm not sure how it's going to work with go flight. I might eventually get rid of the go flight interface and just use the displays. But it also has a very heavy tactile feel. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and I got it off eBay, quite cheap, came from Hong Kong, back to Germany, and into my simulator. By the way, what you see down here is uh, the prototype, or maybe that's a bit early to say, of my uh, pedestal panel that is fitted with various rear panels. I don't know if I've showed you this one already. In a previous video, I guess I didn't, I was lazy. But that is uh, a real panel as well that I completely rewired and it has now, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's now a USB port. There is a Bodner car inside, a Bodner card. 
and down here it connects to my microphones for the switches. Anyways, um, I completely rewired it and now the volume pots are working. So you can not only select uh, uh, your microphone and what you want to hear on your headphones and speakers, but you can also adjust the volume that's supported in Prosum. So each of these knobs is or has its own potentiometer and it will set whatever you say it should set. So in this case with VHF1 and VHF2 I haven't really found a solution uh, to make it to work with Watson. But for the NAFs, ADF and marker sounds you can adjust the volume like the real counterpart. Pretty cool. Second one is not yet wired but you can have a look inside what it looks like. So the pots are missing a lot of wiring and it's a damn shame that you have to destroy a neat cabling job but interfacing the real thing it's I think someone has done it uh, but it's a real pain in the ass for me at least so the simplest thing was just to rewire it from scratch. Throttle is still sitting there, unused, waiting. <laughs> so I guess the ma next major step is going to be interfacing those amazing oh yeah, flight controls. They are really heavy, fully metal. Also got still got the trip counter inside. I can't wait to fly it again. Haven't been flying for two years now. No time, no money to continue building as fast as I want to do at least. Let's have a look behind. That's a total mess. Total, total mess. And work in progress. So down here there's one computer for the Acre screen. Another one running ProSim and first officers and captains displays and a lot of the interfaces. I uh, didn't want to use the flight simulation PC for that, so the host computer, because that one is standing at the back of the room and for testing purposes at least. I might stick with that, uh, with that setup, but right now uh, the computer is running Prozen. So down here, let's so down here, have a look behind and see the mess. <laughs> cables, cables, cables everywhere. As long as it's not finished, the main instrument panel, I won't tidy it up. I tried, I tried to not let the cable run all over the place so I have space for moving uh, the screens but it can be tidied up a lot more. Back here, that's the interface to OEM gear lever. Built like a tank, very solid. And I have attached it to the main instrument panel here. Could have done a better job, but I just used what was in my workshop at the time. And so far it's a uh, it's uh, still doing the job. I might eventually make it a little more stable. But it's, it's sufficient. Now on the captain's side you can see uh, two of those cheap eBay LED dimmer dimming the strips and it has connections to uh, the strips running as floodlight and for AFDS and it's connected to the potentiometers. Down here, look at this mess. I have to tidy it up, definitely. Man. A lot of, lot of cables coming to the flight deck solution interface that is directly screwed onto the, to the panel here. It's one of the smaller cards. I think it's an FTS Sys3X. And it's almost completely uh, completely used. 
I try to organize the cable a little bit. <laughs> but if you have to repair something, good luck. Here is a Bodner card I used for the rest of the switch inputs. I had too few switch inputs with the FDS uh, card over there, so I used another Bodner card I had lying around. And that's also um, one of the, the best approaches of using those potentiometers that are needed for adjusting the screen brightness on the first officer captains in ICA side. Here is uh, uh, the distribution panel for the IBL panel from Flytek Solutions. So all the different panels have their own cables that are bundled here and there's a connection to the dimmer as well as to my relay cards. I really love this one. It's from, uh, what is it, open cockpits? Yep. So I think everyone hates Seok, but it works. <laughs> pretty easily with Prozim. And the cool thing is I, um, I can run all the different devices in the cockpit uh, that are dependent on, on the power of the aircraft, for example, the backlighting and the flood lighting. Uh, first from the power source, then into uh, the relay card, and from there on, uh, the relay card decides whether it should be uh, distributing power to the IBL panel, for example. So when the aircraft is turned off, um, there will be no backlighting, or when the generator power is not available. Also on bus change, you will see it flickering. Pretty cool. Speaking of bus, this is my own little bus distributing power. Yeah, I think that's pretty standard. Down here is a PSU uh, providing 5 volts and 12 volts and powering different uh, panels, interfaces, backlightings, and so on. Also the USB hub. And down here is a test setup uh, with 28 watts. It's an Arduino that is operating a relay card with eight relays. And the relay card decides whether those 28 watts should be fed to this amazing device over here, it's an oral warning module that generates all the different warning sounds inside the cockpit. It's a genuine uh, original part that is uh, located uh, below the right uh, first officer's uh, CDU. And that's the original uh, sound generator more or less. It's a pretty old, I think from 1991. And I screwed it. Uh, I screw it up. No, that's... Do you say it that way? No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Anyways, I had a look inside and it was all dusty. I had to clean it up, but it's still working fabulously. And I will show it to you in a minute. I will also post an extra video probably. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it to uh, the CDU bay and on the back side yeah, I will have to cut holes and on the back side I will then have a laser cut, a laser cut uh, plexiglass panel where uh, the 28 volt generator, the, the relays and uh, the interface is uh, neatly screwed onto. So right now it's fed with 12 volt and it's transforming them into 28. Amazing little device I showed you in one of my videos earlier. Yeah, that's also interesting. That's for the ELEC panel. I have a, a screen you can see back here. So no uh, digits, but a real screen for the ELEC panel on the overhead panel. What else? Oh yeah, that's still embarrassing. <laughs> the, screen, the screen is held in place by this little box until I, I've come up with uh, something similar to the IBL screen holders holding the screens in place. Uh, don't tell anyone. Embarrassing. So, let's go up again. Oh yeah, that's also an interesting detail. That's, uh, <laughs> I found that on eBay as well. You don't. Well, there's so much you can find on eBay. You won't believe it, even in Germany. That's from, um, from a 737 of 
what is it? KLJ Airlines, I think it's, it's from Ukraine. And they're already bankrupt. But it's the wall between the galley on this side and the passenger cabin. I just had to pick it up. I don't know why I have it, <laughs> but I couldn't go by. One day it will surely become handy and you have yeah, another cool table. So as long as I don't have any circuit breakers in the back of the cockpit, that's the best alternative. I might use it in a passenger cabin. I will buy it built one day. Oh yeah, found that one on eBay as well. Pretty amazing. An original, what is it, an FCOM? No, yeah. A flight crew operations manual. Where all the details of the cockpit and the different systems of the 737, even down to the lavatory, are described. That's your best resource if you don't know how something will work on the rear counterpart. You will find it here. Pretty amazing. Very valuable. Let's put that back up here. <laughs> it's not falling off. Okay, what else can I show you? Oh yeah, your warning module in operation. Whoop. Let me get back here. Still no rails. The seats, by the way, uh, not original aircraft seats, but uh, I don't know which company built it years ago. I bought them used as well, but they're specially made for simulators, so they have this nice little cutout. Not too many possibilities of oh, setting it up like the real chair, but you can at least <laughs> move back. Okay. Right now the aircraft is running on the generators. And what I want to do now is switch to ground power and watch what happens. Bus change, light starts flickering. And I turn it off completely. And no backlighting and no floodlights. Those are the little details that never cease to amaze me with the simulator. I just love that, that everything works together so well with uh, software and hardware so that you push a button on the computer screen and the electric current will stop flowing. That's amazing. So, short demonstration of the oral warning module down here. I will just uh, engage and disengage the autopilot. You can hear your original sound. And it won't stop, it won't stop until you cancel the message. You can also hear the relays clackering. Some people find it annoying, me too. But uh, once the aircraft is uh, in the air and all the sound system, all the different sound systems in the, in the simulator are working, you won't, you probably won't hear it. So once again, Maybe the takeoff configuration horn should sound. Just the engine spool off. Oh, yeah, there it is. So let's produce an overspeed warning. You should hear it clackering. Totally different sound to the computer generated ones. That's it for today. If you liked it, 
Don't forget to subscribe to get more news of the simulator. Until then, many happy landings and see you soon.